dual stories of the promised land. This northern Israel school is having a ceremonial Passover meal before leaving for holiday break. As students commemorate the freedom of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt and journey to what would become the land of Israel, nine-year-old Kiragar and Nina and her family are marking their own exodus. It was only weeks ago that the Garanina family made the decision to pick up their lives in Kiev and flee to Israel following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We were hiding for six days in a basement in Bucha, and children saw all of that. How can we explain to them why they have to leave their warm bed and beautiful apartment to hide in a damp basement from rockets? On the very first day at 5.30 in the morning, on the 24th of February, we left from Kiev to a nearby village, Bucha. We left Ukraine and went to Poland. We were in Poland for two weeks and were undergoing consular verification. The United Nations reports that over 4 million Ukrainians have fled their country since the beginning of Russia's wide-scale invasion on February 24th. Thousands have found refuge in Israel, and those eligible for citizenship are now putting down roots. Nofa Galil in northern Israel, a town already boasting a strong Russian-speaking community, has welcomed Ukrainian families with open arms. There are a lot of Ukrainians here, a lot of them here in Nofa Galil. We live at a hotel now and talk to each other a lot. There are people from all around Ukraine, Mariupol, Mykolaiv, Kiev, Zaporozhye, Kharkiv, a lot of people, women and children. The influx of families to the town who don't know Hebrew have made Russian-speaking teachers like Marina, who herself was born in Ukraine, critical in incorporating their kids into school. The children were put in classes according to their age, and a mentor, a Russian-speaking educator, accompanied each child in their class. We have Russian speakers in each class, children and teachers, and they accompany them during breaks, translate for them, help them with their studies, so they'll feel as secure as possible and at home. A total of five Ukrainian children have joined the Carmel School so far, which is focusing first on making sure that all new students get acclimated in the environment, then when the time is right, catching them up academically. We know that children who leave everything behind and come to a new place need much more than just to study at school. They need a group. It's very important to them, a clique, to make friends, play with them, to be with them after school and, of course, to feel as good as they can. Since I don't know the language, it's quite hard to study, but it's quite fun. Anyway, everyone tries to help. Yesterday was only her first day at school. This is Kira's second day at her new school, and she's excited to show off her classroom to her family and looks eager about getting involved with the community, but also remembers a life left behind. In Israel, I expect to have more communication, more friends. I hope my dad comes here. I'm really waiting for him. Kira is already making friends days into starting at the Carmel School, and the Garaninas look ready for a new chapter as a family. But they say that Ukraine will always be their home.